You are listening to the Catholic Thinkers Podcast, a free treasury of instruction in the Catholic intellectual tradition. If you enjoy this lecture, please visit us at catholicthinkers.org forward slash donate. This is uh, Father James Shaw, and I have a, uh, a brief talk which is called Bridge Walkers, or in Latin it's called Homo Ambulans. The man is a being who walks. Uh, this was a, a piece that comes go back to 2007. Since the bridge in Minneapolis collapsed, that, remember there's a bridge that went across the Mississippi there that collapsed, um, uh, and other bridges have collapsed over the years so that we are in some sense bridge conscious. In natural law class one year, I asked the class, what is the natural law of bridges? I was thinking of J.M. Bochensky's chapter in his book, uh, Philosophy and Introduction, on law. Bochensky showed that a relation exists between mind and cosmos, mind and matter. A bridge built by men uh, from an, a bridge is built by men from antiquity to the present. Um, they still stand. And um, a, uh, a bridge is designed to provide a way over a river or a, a chasm or <clears throat> other natural or human obstacles. Bridge builders understand the mathematics, the mathematical and geometric principles enabling them to designed precisely a bridge. They know the quantities of stone or other materials used uh, in the construction. Thus, uh, bridge builders know the laws of the materials that they work with, uh, distances, stress, and other elements that go into the construction. If they make a mistake um, in design, the bridge will collapse. Collapsing bridges indicate a correspondence between mind and reality. Our minds know enough about reality to find and to use its laws. Once the bridge is built, the laws are present in the bridge itself, making it to be what it is. Often I walk across, when I lived in Washington, I walk across Key Bridge, which is just below the campus, uh, over to the Virginia side from the district, uh, across the Potomac. It is a handsome high bridge with several arches. I said to the class, what does one think about before crossing a bridge? First, he assumes that the natural law of bridges is at work within the key bridge or any other bridge that he tries to cross. Usually, we do not think of this, but uh, uh, implicitly assume it. If we did not, if we did not think that the laws of the bridge were holding, we would not put a foot on the bridge because we would not trust it to stand up while we walked across it. Secondly, we assume that we are beings who can walk. So you can't walk across a bridge unless you can walk. Man is homo ambulans, that is, a being uh, who walks. Other animals, of course, walk. Our walking is a function of our definition, anima rationale, a rational animal. When we walk across a bridge, we do so for a purpose, but not just to get to the other side. Why do we want to go to the other side? A thousand different reasons, good and bad, exist. We do not always cross for the same reason, but we walk uh, granted that we could drive or fly or swim or take a boat if we 
either wanted to or had to. But we walked. Walking across Key Bridge from Virginia, we see the Three Sisters Islands in the Potomac. We note the tide from the bay uh, in and out. Uh, it still goes up the Potomac for a ways. But we note the trees on the shores and the boathouses. On the rise, we see the towers of Georgetown. On the opposite side, we see the curve in the, in the river, uh, the Kennedy Center, the Washington Monument, and the Roosevelt Island. Overhead, we often uh, uh, see planes in and out of Reagan Airport. Often below are boats of various types, uh, and in the winter we see ice. Having some trouble with my leg for a while one time, it became difficult to walk, a favorite shawl occupation. Suddenly, what it means to be a being that can walk, who has local motion under the control of his mind and will, takes on a new uh, understanding, a new sense. We did not give ourselves uh, the makeup that we have whereby we walk. We find we have it without thinking about it. The world could never work if we did not walk. It's primary to almost everything that we do. So why do we uh, uh, cross a bridge? Uh, somewhat in the spirit of Hazlitt's famous essay on taking a journey, uh, an essay that's well worth reading. We walk because it is itself an exhilarating experience. And yet, the perfection of walking a bridge is not the fact that we have legs or that the natural laws of a bridge are put there uh, by our minds, evidently in conformity with the mind that made things in the first place to be what they are. The natural laws of bridge building were in existence even before there were men who built bridges, indeed even before there were bridges. The re reasoning why they worked would have been ex in existence even if men hadn't yet figured out what they were. And yet we walk across the bridge uh, never giving a second thought to the laws of, of bridges or to the fact that we have legs and can uh, choose what to do with them. If we are not the bridge builders, the bridge is either useful or beautiful or pleasant or sometimes dangerous when it is, uh, when its inner laws do not work or our purpose in walking are wrongful. Purposes are wrongful. The last bridge may also be destroyed in wartime, as I think there was a famous novel about that in World War II, The Last Bridge. Man is homo ambulans, the man, the being that walked. This is part of his uh, natural law, the law of reason. This endowment enables him to get to places about his home or to, uh, to the top of Mount Rainier, which a student told me uh, he climbed this fast summer. Walking is a kind of natural reflection or natural reflection uh, of man's mind, which is uh, itself capable of knowing all things. His walking takes him to places he knows. The natural law <clears throat> indicates that relations relation between all of our natural endowments, including our two legs and our knowing all that is. There's a relationship between our knowing and the things that are out there. Our walking is a reminder that there really are places and realities outside of our minds to which we want uh, to go, at which we want to be present so that the bridge 
is basically a, a reality if we think about it. it. It's existence, it's confidence existence, that we have legs, we can cross it, and that there's a conformity between our mind and thing. The end of the article on bridge buildings. We hope you enjoyed listening to Catholic Thinkers. Please visit us at catholicthinkers.org forward slash donate to help us keep this content free.